why is Hollywood so difficult to pitch? The biggest thing is it's expensive to do a project, so the risks are gargantuan. Mm -hmm. You know, we joke about trying to pitch to somebody who has the power to say maybe. And it's just, I mean, we find it hard enough to sell a book. And when you're talking about even a small film, much less of a big film, they're just one mistake, your career is pretty much defined. Once it's not you, upward. Yeah, yeah, until you're established. So I will say the upside of this is, yes, it's always been hard. I don't think that's changed from my dad's time or the generation. The thing that was great during the studio system, which predates my father, is that they it was like you were hired and you were guaranteed work. You were under contract. Everybody is freelance now. Um, and um, I'm talking about people above the line. I'm not, you know, the unions, you know, they're always going to work. Uh, people in post-production, like my brother who owns his own company, they're always going to work. Um, I, I think the good news is that I had mentioned Apple earlier, Apple, Hulu, Netflix when they come out of this problem, which they inevitably will. Amazon, they're providing new markets and new places and they're, you still have to have someone go in with you who's, I think the trick is to go in with somebody that they want to be in business with. And that's true in any business, I think. Now, then, then there's also the, the idea that everybody that you're pitching to for the most part considers themselves an expert. I will say that in television now, whatever form, streaming network, that the producer has less power in that than in movies because, as the director does, because most directors in television are hired, it's the writer who has the power finally. Mm. And, and that, especially that, the showrunner. Yeah. And, and that's a good thing. And I think, you know. Sure. If I'm pitching a group of Hollywood executives versus, let's say, a group of auto executives, is my pitching style the same? I know you gave the story of the, the Hawaiian shirts and maybe maybe not showing the same respect, but um, but let's suppose I'm showing them respect. I come in dressed appropriately. Um, is the style any different? Well, there, there are areas that are very similar and mm -hmm. areas that are not. I think the expectations are different for the, t the two environments. But, but in each case, it's, we'll start with first impressions. The way you walk into a room is gargantuan. It's like by the time the doorknob is being turned, you're, already, you're being evaluated. <clears throat> there was a, uh, an incredible research study where they looked at music students who were doing recitals. And the first thing they looked at was how do they walk on stage? Now in this study, um, when, you're, uh, when they bring in test, audience of, test audiences for sitcoms and they had, they're holding dials, if you turn them this way, we like it, this way, we don't like it. And the more I turn, the more I like it or don't. And it's continuous. That's what they were using to evaluate. And the way they walked on right away, huge. And it lasted for several minutes, the effects of it. Somebody walks in kind of mousy, doesn't make eye contact, they walk in with shoulder back. Big difference before they play a note. They also looked at when they screwed up. If they reacted badly, if they're playing and, or, you know, I just loved, who cares? Big difference in terms of a big dip if you show it. So those things start to matter. Simple things like eye contact, gargantuan. Again, if you're dealing with one person, as sort of a rule from the research, 50% eye contact is good. If you're looking at somebody 100% of the time, it's a lab experiment and we're waiting for them to tear the wings off the flies. Um, if they never look, then it's what's the matter with this person, it's kind of creepy. If you have a group of people, you look at everyone, you make sure. Even if you're looking at the cheese a little more, um, 
the person in the corner that you never look at because you know he's an underling, well, later when they have a meeting and talk about you, is going to skunk you because you insulted him. So that starts to make a difference. All these things start to make a difference, whether it's in Hollywood or whether it's in business. Uh, yeah. Now, the, you were asking why is a Hollywood pitch so difficult. Again, um, you start off with the idea of you should have an original idea, but not too original. Because if nobody's ever done it, there's a skepticism of this is such a great idea in a hundred years, how come nobody's, you know, this is a losing idea. So you have to tread very lightly here. And again, um, how much confidence, there's, there's, a, there's a continuum of confidence to arrogance to fear, and you have to find a really comfortable place along there to do it. Now, another thing, tell me when you want me to stop, because this, this can go on for a while, but um, I think. Oh, oh. I just had one thought: a, a gender confidence styles, and I don't mean to go too much in the. How do you mean? Female director. If if a woman is is too confident, do you think maybe she'd be seen as a little aggressive? Well, I think that's changing. Uh, I I I would agree with Jeffrey that it's changing, but for openers, remember that the gender issue is from both sides. Right. Does a woman walk in with an expectation that I'm not going to be taken as seriously or I have to prove myself harder? That's an issue that you may or may not have. And again, the people on the other side. Now, <clears throat> it's interesting because there's a phenomenon called stereotypical threat. And again, they do studies where if um, white and black kids take the same exam, and they're asked to indicate their race on the paper, black students will do worse than white students in a math test. If they're asked at the end, that difference is washed out. If it's whites and Asians, the Asians will do better. If they're asked those things at the beginning, not at the end. So people walk in thinking, I'm, how am I gonna be looked at? Mm -hmm. And so if you're a woman and you have total confidence in yourself, you're still aware that the way you're looked at, you bring, you know, what are you bringing in there with you? Do I have to do more because, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We bring issues in with us. Yeah, I, I but just, then there's, there's just, I'm, I'm sorry, just one more big overriding idea about, about in general is that there's an expectation when you walk in to give a pitch that you should be pretty good at this because you've had time to prepare and you're an expert in what you're doing, so you should be dazzling. <clears throat> That's kind of a heavy responsibility to walk in with. It's, you know, people, people say to me sometimes, when I have to get up and talk in front of a group, I'm scared blankless, but if I'm ans answering questions to the same group, I'm really comfortable. And again, it's the idea of expectation. If you've had time to prepare, A, you, you should be an expert or why are you up there? And then if you're an expert and you've had time to prepare, you better have something pretty good for us, which is different than just being asked off the cuff. So again, if you're, if you're in the middle of a pitch meeting and somebody says, yeah, you know, I like your idea, it's very nice, but we just got this novel, would you be interested in doing it? What would you do with it? That's sometimes easier to do than a pitch you brought in because you don't have the expectation of you've prepared this already, this better be good. Does that make sense? It does. And I also think that it depends on what level in any business you're in. I mean, if you're Shonda Rhimes and you walk into a room, you were asking about women, so arguably the most successful female showrunner, maybe in the top 10 of all time, because show running is a relatively new phenomenon. And uh, now they come to her and she decides if she'll do it or not. But if you read about her and you read about the struggles she had, not only as a woman, but as a black woman, it, it, she really had to work her way up. And um, the thing I would add to all of this, which is great, is that what I've found when I've been pitched to, because I've produced things, you know, film and, um, and theater, and it's all the same thing, is you've got to be yourself. 
if you try to come in with a kind of false self, you know, if you're presenting a persona, that will turn people off. If you're not, if you just be who you are, and not everybody has to be, you know, I love that little impression Peter did of the L theater graduate, but you know, it's like some people, we heard this from interviews in the book, some people are quiet, but people hear them, you know? I mean, I, I personally think that sometimes people who are quiet and thoughtful are much more effective than people who are like, look what I've got, and you know, you've never seen anything like this before. And and by the way, um, here's a lot of paperwork for you to sign. And you know, um, I think you just have to be who you are. Um, and one of the producers in the book who started her career with Bonnie Raitt, Bonnie Raitt, <laughs> Bonnie Hunt. Bonnie Raitt would have been nice yeah, too. Yeah, I was like, oh wow. Um, yeah. But uh, and she met Bonnie Raitt at Second City. Uh, Bonnie, Hunt. Bonnie Hunt at Second City, and she said that the thing that she learned at right away was just to come in, and you don't have to. You never start with "Look what I've got for you today." Start with finding out who they are. Improv a little. Don't don't you know? Um, this is this is um, in in Japan, which we have in the book is. It'll take days before they want to hear what you have. You know, they want to see who you are. Um, we could do better at that. You know, everybody's in such a rush. I worked in Canada for a number of years, and th there's less money, and but the quality is excellent, and they take time. You know, they take time to get to know you. You want to know who you're working with, the real person. I think that goes back to the J.J. Abrams quote. You know. So yeah, all those things are really, really important. What Peter's talking about, but if you're not who you, if you're not, if you're not really the person that you are, if you bring some phony, fake person in, you're not going to sell them anything. And you know this; you've heard this a thousand times, I'm sure. What if you bring a better version of yourself in? <laughs> well, that's always good. <laughs> well, you know, I, th I think a big part of you this, said no jokes, and then you go. To <laughs> I was asking. I was asking for a friend. Actually. <laughs> I mean, you know, a big part of the problem is we've talked to people who have a background both in acting and improv, and they are wonderful in a room. They just couldn't be any comfortabler. And there are other people who say, you know, I'm a writer because I like to sit by myself and cogitate. And I'm not comfortable with a lot of other people. And then I have to leave my room and go in front of a room of people and talk to them. And I think, again, as Jeffrey's saying, is you have to do a little bit of know thyself and say, okay, I can be quiet and still get my idea across. And I can show the gravitas in my work or the comedy. But I can do it low key. And I can do a lot of letting my work speak for me. Mm -hmm. And if I try and act like I'm a stand-up all of a sudden, when that doesn't, that doesn't work well. No. But we also ran across some interesting research where they looked at the question of do, in, do extroverts make better salespeople? And what they found was no. Does that mean introverts are better? No. They, they said there's a group in the middle they refer to as ambiverts. <laughs> and again, they said that the problem that extroverts have is it's all about them. So sometimes they don't get to the important points they're pitching because they're still talking about themselves. Introverts sometimes just never get it out. Ambiverts have a better idea. They're, they tend to be more empathic and figure out what your needs are and be able to cater to them more directly mm -hmm. and to get out the stuff that's important to them. 